very good afternoon welcome to the next session uh, that i ended my last lecture to the concept of the work function right and i told that what is the work function it is nothing but the energy difference between the vacuum level and the fermi level right this is the energy difference between the vacuum level and the fermi level but but how can we define the, in terms of energy band diagram because energy band diagram is a very easiest way to represent everything to understand everything that what is happening right so uh, it's, it's nothing but that uh, uh, i i am just drawing this picture i am just drawing this picture to get to understand please try to understand it's very easily this is your vacuum level right and uh, this is your normal this is your ec and this is your ev and this is your vacuum okay and in the middle sorry in the middle there is ei and because of p type of semiconductor so this is your ef right okay so uh, what is that what is what is the work function what i has uh, what i said that this is the work function in between your vacuum level and the fermi level so if it's your vacuum level and if it's your fermi level so how can you define the work function just like this sorry 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 this is the vacuum level right right sorry not this from this vacuum level to this fermi level right okay so please try to understand uh, that what is the need of this work function if it is a distance between the vacuum level and the fermi level so we can say that whenever we are giving so much energy to the electrons right setting at the fermi level setting at the fermi level the electrons are will be pulled out from the fermi level to the vacuum from the from the metal okay to pull the electrons from fermi level to the vacuum from the metal, uh, the, 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 the function of the work function is justified, right? So, if we consider that this is the vacuum level and uh, we can say that uh, um, the distance between the, the distance between the vacuum and the conduction band, yes, there is an important parameter that is known as electron affinity. You should have uh, this knowledge of that. This is electron affinity. Okay, and this is your work function. So, work function is nothing but the distance between your vacuum and the Fermi energy. And electrons affinity is nothing but the distance between your vacuum and the conduction band in the semiconductor. And in the semiconductor, it is known as your electron affinity. Okay, and EF will be below to this EV because of the p-type substrate right okay so in other words we can we can say that uh, this much energy is required to pull the electrons uh, from the conduction band to the vacuum if we if we want to define this electron affinity this is nothing but uh, this is a this is a gap between this is a difference between your vacuum and the conduction band so what we can say in other words we can say that uh, this much energy this much energy is required to pull the electrons uh, from the conduction band to this vacuum right and in silicon please note it down the electron affinity i must uh, write over here in silicon the electron affinity means this value this value is 4.05 electron volt so electron affinity is 4.05 electron volt okay and and half of the band gap that is 0 0.56 electron volt and the doping concentration that is the this this distance this distance is 0 0.3 electron volt that i have already said over here this 0 0.3 electron volt so if we um, um 0 0.3 yes if we if we add this it becomes 11 um, 94.91 electron volt so this is your total work function for p type silicon what my point you have came to know the concept of the work function you have came to know the concept of the electron affinity why it is needed how to calculate this work function of the p-type semiconductor or in-type semiconductor by assuming the general values at room temperature right for electron affinity in silicon the value is 4.05 electron volt means this portion 
right means this portion and the half half the band gap energy half the band gap energy means this is the total band gap energy right this is a total band gap energy so from this this one and this one this is the half portion this is one half this is one half so this half of the band gap energy is your 0 0.56 electron volt okay and uh, this is the, this is this one this is the bulk potential this is the gap between your um, intrinsic energy band and the Fermi band that I have already uh, said in my last lecture so this is a doping uh, concentration so this is your 0 0.3 electron volt so if we add this so if we add these three values we can get the value of this work function because work function is the distance between your vacuum and the uh, Fermi energy level so the work function value is 4.91 electron volt for p type silicon okay so this should um, keep in mind because because these these values are very important for your higher studies for your research work and everything but you should have the knowledge that how it is happening you should have the knowledge you should know the different parameters associated with the scaling associated with the short channel effect this is the challenges of the scaling by the way okay so so with with acceptor impurities of okay so this this p type p type silicon right so p type silicon where the acceptor impurities means n a is equal to 10 to the power 15 per centimeter cube right and uh, impurities nothing but this is acceptor impurities is p okay so so different metals have different work function different metals have different work function see for aluminium this is 4.1 I am just telling for your reference for aluminium this is 4.1 electron volt for gold and uh, gold and platinum this is greater than 5 electron volt and so on okay so uh, so it's uh, it's 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 nothing but a two terminal device and both have the same work function why it is called two terminal device because that we have said that is your it is your gate it is your oxide it is your gate, it is your oxide and it is your p-type silicon substrate. So, there is two terminals, right? So, these two terminals and these two terminals, they should have the equal work function. Otherwise, we can, we, it, it cannot be stabilized, it cannot be saturated, right? Okay. So, one important point that should be kept in our mind that this is, that is VTH. VTH means this is a threshold voltage okay and that is very important for the short channel effect so this is the threshold voltage it is the function of that is the function of oxide thickness that we have already told oxide thickness and substrate doping concentration substrate doping concentration that we have discussed all about so this this vth is a function of the oxide thickness and substrate doping concentration it's not dependent on this length and width of this transistor it is not dependent on the length and width of the transistor so we have to keep it in mind this kind of knowledge because this will help us a lot whenever we will um, defense the challenges of this scaling right okay so whenever i would like to design a small transistor the then then if we if we draw if we if we draw the curve between your vth and the length this vth and the length that it should be flat it should be flat because whenever we are going to design the transistor the length <coughs> uh the vtage versus l curve if we want to do the 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 graph should be flat okay because why why it is so because the final if we if we do the final expression because here it's not necessary to derive the all about your vth we have to know the very um, final expression of the vth so if we look the look at the vth final expression the threshold voltage final expression it is a combination of flat band voltage plus two phi b that is the bulk potential and plus 4 epsilon ci this is the permittivity into q into na 5b divided by c ox c ox means oxide capacitor so this is the final expression of this your v threshold voltage so there is no l term or no w term 
So these what we have seen to build the bigger transistor of 100 micron or 50 micron and so on VTH is exactly flat. Okay, so VTH is exactly flat because this is not dependent on the length or width and that's why uh, this, this graph is significant. This graph is significant, right? Okay, but but now it's an important point. Whenever we start to decrease the length, right? Decrease because this is a normal length. This is a long channel transistor. For it is a long channel transistor. But we have to design this transistor in a nanometer level. We have to decrease the length, right? From from for uh, uh, example, suppose some from sub micron level to micron level. Okay, that is for sub micron level to 0 0.5 micron or 0 0.2 micron, then what will happen? So, there is a beauty of this hot channel effect. Okay, so uh, now my uh, next discussion that is whenever <coughs> I am just right over here, whenever is visible, I think, whenever. Whenever we start, whenever we start decreasing the L means decreasing the length, okay, then um, we have to, uh, then we start to measure the threshold voltage that is no longer flat as per the expectation. So, whenever we will start decreasing the length L, this VTH that has been shown before, it is not the flat in nature. And it will also start um, uh, decreasing as shown, I, I, will, I will show the graph uh, and it is called the uh, short channel effect. So, so how, how you can do that? So, how we can uh, define graphically? So, this is length and this is your VTH. Okay, so if it is goes down, if it is, if it is starts decreasing, this was my flat nature. Okay, so this is my flat nature in general, but this will not flat, this will go to roll off, right? This will go to roll off, this will go to decrease and this effect is known as short channel effect. So this is for P-type semiconductor. Okay, so so if you if you really do a very small in channel transistor, very small in channel P type substrate transistor, it should have the positive threshold voltage, right? That I discussed before to make it on. And the same thing will happen if it is P channel transistor. So it is for in channel transistor, but because because there is a positive threshold voltage, but for I must say that this is your in channel, right? But for negative threshold voltage. For negative threshold voltage because this is VT, uh, uh, minus VTH, negative threshold voltage when it is required to turn on the P channel transistor, right? So, P channel transistor, we are here also this is here. Uh, it, it was it was supposed to be flat, but 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 whenever we will go on uh, decreasing, this is also rolled off. This is also rolled off, right? So, for negative threshold voltage, VTA starts decreasing and, and what, uh, whether it is N-channel or P-channel transistor, that does not matter. VTA decreases as your L decreases. VTA decreases as your L decreases and this is nothing but the short channel effect. Okay, so, so this problem is very large and whenever we talk about the 100 nanometer because it is a sub micro level but whenever we, we go to the micro level with the nanometer level it will be it will be a big problem. So let's first understand that why this VTH rolls off right and for understanding that we need to take some picture got my point so this is a very big problem we have to short out this problem and because this is a, a very big challenge for any kind of design okay so if we if we see some design i will discuss very shortly very shortly again these kind of diagram because this is an important diagram this is a semiconductor this is n plus here it is oxide and here it is gate and this is P. Okay. So, just just note it down that whenever there is a N plus P region, whenever there is a N plus P region, 
another important new term that is built-in potential. You all know from the concept of the diode, PN junction diode. So there is also a built-in potential. So there, here is also the building potential because there is an N plus P region. Okay, so 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 there is going to be a depletion region, and source and drain region have already depleted as Vg equal to zero. From the concept of the diode, from the concept of the depletion region, from the concept of the building potential, from the PN junction diode. Right. So, when electron and hole concentration are much lower than the impurity concentration, it is called the depletion region. I am again writing over here that when the electron concentration and hole concentration, electron concentration and hole concentration are much lower than impurity concentration. Then it is called depletion region. Okay, because because we know that that is n equal to p equal to n, uh, ten to the power ten, and n p equal to n square. So n and p are much smaller than this ten to the power uh, ten to the power fifteen that I have already discussed. So then it is called a depletion region. So whenever transistor length is very high, the depletion region is so small. Hmm, so large volume is depleted and inverted. But whenever I scale the transistor, there will be a significant fraction of change in this channel length. Okay, got my point. Whenever, whenever I will um, uh, scale the transistor, there will be a significant fraction of change in the channel length. Channel length means this one. Okay, so so there is a very big problem, and this can be shot out by this concept. So I think that. Uh, no need to say more more in detail in the short channel effect because you should have the knowledge that what is short channel effect and to overcome this problem what are the challenges we are facing and how to solve this challenge okay and what is the graph between your vth and length and how it is decreases what what do you mean by vth roll off everything in terms of energy band diagram everything uh, it should be needed for you all uh, to describe the short channel effect very clearly and you should have the knowledge of this work function of electron affinity of built-in potential of bulk potential every parameter that I have already discussed okay so this is the end of the short channel FA as well as the scaling and in my next lecture I will give I will give a brief idea of the various devices very shortly that is fin fit and uh, your um, nanoscale MOSFET and everything okay so till now please continue uh, this session and please start uh, studying yourself and uh, to completely understand that what I have delivered in my lecture thank you so much